Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So uh, we're going to do the part two of the weekly eye catchers. Um, and one thing I am going to try and do from now on is I'm also going to post the eye catchers as a comment on the actual ratings themselves. Um, this will be for premium and pro members obviously, um, but you'll be able to see them straight away. You won't have to wait for these videos to see who I'm um, interested in going forward. So let's start off with um, earlier on this week, we had a maiden at Bellistown which is won by all things nice. Now, Joseph O'Brien likes to target this race with a decent horse, and I thought Joe Lyon's horse was also very good on debut and was expected to run well, having gone off 9-4. to four. The horse who caught my eye was Starry Heavens, who finished a good third. Um, she was very green early on. She jumped the path. Um, her legs were all over the place early on before running on really strongly um, for third. I think the front two, and even fourth, are better than, you know... That they'll be in decent handicaps or great, uh, group races um, later on in the season. And with that in mind, I think Starry Heavens has run a really good effort on debut. And she'll improve, I think, the most out of all of these. All things nice had already had the run, so should should have you know had that bit of experience. Semantics, I thought, was very professional on the day. Whereas Starry Heavens, I thought, was a bit all over the place. And I think she will improve massively for that run. So keep an eye on Starry Heavens in a similar race next time and then to see where they progress with her. Another horse that caught my eye also on the same day at Bellystown was The Last Swallow, who finished seventh as our top rated horse. And I really think um, The Last Swallow was beaten by the draw here. She was caught out wide um, and then didn't get a run. And she finished seventh, staying on really strongly having never really been asked for an effort. Gary Carroll, once he realised the race had gone, just nudged her gently home. And I think on her second run in a handicap, having finished second and now seventh, um, initially when you look at her, her race next time or her form next time, you'll see a two and then you'll see a seven and think, well, she actually didn't improve or anything. I think she could have easily finished second here, maybe even pushed the, the Pargy B um, for the win. And with that in mind, I think she is progressing still, the, the last swallow, and yet her form figures will suggest she isn't. Um, and you may find that she goes off a bigger price than she should do. You know, she's not going to be a, a world beater. She's not going to be winning listed ra races or anything like that. She could certainly win a 47 to 65 handicap. The third horse came from Newbury, um, and that was Clochette. Of... Newcomers that don't win, this is probably one of the most professional and impressive performances I've seen for a horse being beaten, was um, from Clochette. She did everything right here except win. She travelled really well, probably in the wrong part of the track. Uh, when there was a gap, she was asked to go through it and she picked up really impressively to get through that gap. However, she was only ever really pushed hands and heels by the jockey and she finished a never near a second, closing all the way to the line. I think, I think Clochette is a group horse, um, or a listed horse at least, of the future. I really thought that was a very good performance, despite finishing second on debut, beaten by another debutant. So I would really be keen on Clochette to hopefully run in another novice stakes before then stepping up. I think she'll go. I, I think you'll find she'll probably turn up in a novice event next and be a really short price. Um, but I think she is very, very good and is definitely one to add to your nag meet for the future. On the following day, which was the first, when was the first? On the Friday, we move on to a horse called Nikki's Girl, who finished fourth at Doncaster. Now, she came down the wrong part of the track. Um, initially, uh, it was the first race of the day. You don't know where the wrong part of the track is. But then you watch the other races. You notice where the horses are seemingly finishing strongly and where those aren't. And Nikki's girl went down the part of the track where they seemed to struggle throughout the day to really pick up at the end. Now, Nikki's girl's form, again, she won, then she was third, third, first, and now it's going to have a four next to it. And again, you're going to look at that next time and go, yeah, she got beat last time having won. It was too much for her. I don't believe it was. I don't think... Um, she was out of this race at all. I think if she comes down the right part of the track, she goes very close to winning it. 
And with that in mind, she's not going to be moved by the handicapper. And there's going to be a race that they can certainly win with Nikki's girl um, very soon. The next horse came from a novice stakes at Sandown, and that was the parent. Now, again, watch the parents run. As a newcomer, I thought he was very good. Um, in terms of being eye-catching. I thought he looked very unprofessional. Um, he didn't know what he was doing. Um, he's going to improve massively for this run. You know, not like Clochette, who I thought did everything right and got beat. But was beaten through being looked after, through being looked after by the jockey. This one, I thought they tried to get him to run forward and he didn't really know what he was doing. But I think he will m improve massively. And yet he's still not finished that far behind. Three decent horses with, with um, experience under their belt. The parent was slowly away, as I've put in my write-up. Slowly away, was green, legs were all over the place. When he, they asked him for his effort, again, his legs went all, all over the place. And I think he'll improve massively for the run. Also, the experience of those three at the front. When they started, I can't remember who went forward. But the, the next three were One Nation, Golden Speech and Stormbuster. Back in 10th was the parent turning in. And the parent is the only horse to actually really make ground from the back of the field. I think if he'd had the experience and was able to get out on terms and be with them, I actually think he could, could potentially beat all of these. If he doesn't um, improve and progress from that run, which I think he will do. Moving on to a race at Doncaster, also on the Friday. And I think this horse is going to be targeted at the Skybet Dash at York on the 23rd of July. Um, I think we already have one that we like in that, so we'll keep an eye on that, uh, first folio. Um, but if Venturous turns back up to the race that he won last year, I think it was here. Yes, it was this one here, which is this race here. I think he goes very close again this year. Watch his race at Doncaster. He travelled well um, and showed enough to suggest that he can win off the mark that he won off last year. He travelled well, but didn't quite pick up as he can do. But that is a thing that does happen at Doncaster. They don't always pick up. Whereas I think at York, the, the layout of the track allows those horses to pick up much um, stronger when they're asked for their efforts. Whereas Doncaster, I think it's harder to do that. So Venturous, I thought he travelled well enough to suggest that he can go um, very close next time, hopefully in the Skybet Dash. Back to Beverly, and another newcomer that caught my eye was Mrs. Trump, who finished second to our top-rated horse, California Gem. Now, finishing second to a top-rated horse is always good, um, because it suggests that the right type of horses have the right type of horse has won the race. So the horses behind generally work out to be the you know the second, the third, the fourth best in the race. Mrs. Trump was slowly away, as you could expect at being a debutant, and with a lot of the field having experience. Again, when they started to come down that hill at Beverly, um, she was all over the place. Her legs were very, um, completely wayward. She didn't know what she was doing. And then she didn't get a clear run. She was pulled out eventually and finished really strongly for second. And that caught my eye, uh, uh, particularly with the other horses around her. You can see the third was bang up there on the ratings, the fifth and the sixth. Only the fourth Bernadine kind of broke the ratings order, which kind of suggests that this race should work out well. And Mrs. Trump, with that run under her belt, I think she will improve massively and can be a big player in, in a similar race next time. I don't think she's like Clochette, who I think is a group horse as a newcomer, but I do think Mrs. Trump is, is going to be able to win a, a, a novice event next time and then we can see where, where they go with her. Back to Beverly, and the horse that caught my eye here was Vaunted, who I thought travelled really well, and if he'd got a run, would have gone very close to winning this race. The problem is with Vaunted is he does need luck in running, because he can get himself, um, oh, sorry, she can get herself um, boxed in, or, or obviously the jockey gets her boxed in, but her running style means that she is um, subject to, to requiring a bit of luck in running. She's not that experienced. It's not like she's had 25 runs and for 20 of them she's been boxed in. You know, she's only had the, what, eight runs to her career. And I think she's 
if they can start to get her out earlier, I think she's ahead of a mark and she's she's not going to be a naught to seventy five horse. I think she's better than that. Um, so vaunted, vaunted also has been to Beverly a few times and ran well. So I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing her come back to Beverly. Uh, you can see that she did win back here, and then ran okay again when fourth uh, yesterday. If they can find another race for her at Beverly, she'd be very, very interesting for me. Sticking at Beverly, we had a class six handicap. Now, I wouldn't normally put a horse in Monagme from a class six, class six handicap, but I think this horse has been um, very, very carefully plotted to win a handicap. So they, they may not even go for it next time, but this horse is going to win soon if it's not next time. And that horse is Shimmering Sands. With a clear run, Shimmering Sands wins that race. Didn't get a clear run at all. And you can see the form is, is useless. Absolutely dire. Suggesting that they've not really been going for it yet. Suddenly into a handicap on debut, then they go for it. And as I said, I think if she'd got a clear run, she would have won that race um, and been quite a good winner of it. I'm hoping because she went off 14 to 1, I'm saying she, he, I'm hoping because he went off 14 to 1 and finished second, people are going to look at it and go, it was a fluke. And next time, a similar race, you're still going to get 7 to 1, hopefully. Possibly. Um, that all being said, Stripsy won the race. Now, I don't mind Stripsy actually beating Shimmering Sands in terms of the form as well. Stripsy finished second in a race last year at this time, suggesting that they do try and get that horse to run well at this time of year. The trainer, Timmy Stabee, was actually on a, uh, having a five-timer that day, almost suggesting that Shimmering Sands, whilst should have won, I feel, probably bumped into a horse that had been targeted for the day as well. So uh, you could almost upgrade that form a little bit more and say that it was good form. You could even then go back as far as Cardinia, who finished third, was our top rated horse, maybe bumped into two. One that had been targeted and another that had been plotted. So I, I don't mind that race as a whole. I don't like putting too many horses from class six handicaps because they're class six handicappers, not necessarily because they're rubbish or they're the, they're the poorer horses, but because of their inconsistency and their, their ability to be consistent and show their form time and time again. They sometimes just show one good effort and then runs five or six rubbish races again. So that's why I try not to get too involved in the, the lower class races um, because of the inconsistency around it. Moving on to the final race on the Beverly card and the one that really caught my eye here and you can actually see he hardly traded shorter in the run but Mr Trevor did not get a run at all. Um, and yeah, I think he was unlucky. I thought I thought he would have gone very close. They've been um, switching about with his trip. You can see that last time out, they tried him over just shy of six. Before that, it was seven. Before that, it was six. 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 I think seven is what he wants. So keep an eye out for Mr. Trevor when he's back over seven again. But also, just needs a bit of luck in running. Obviously, again, because of his running style, that does make it tricky. And because they're class six horses, again, it makes it tricky because horses don't quicken like you expect them to. Um, but Mr. Trevor, because he's got a seven next to his name, you know, and his form doesn't look great, three, four, 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 two, five, seven, people are going to slightly overlook him because there's going to be another horse in the race who finished second last time. That second doesn't necessarily mean it's a better second than Mr. Trevor. Like here, I would say Mr. Trevor ran better than Desert Dream, Fire in the Rain, Evader and Angel. Only Stony Lane would I probably say was better than Mr Trevor for sure. Although, actually down here I said for me, Mr Trevor simply wins with a clear run. I think he was that close to... Um, he was that unlucky. So if you think that, when they reoppose, especially, you know, if they reoppose, you're going to get a better price about Mr Trevor because he's got a 7 next to its name rather than a 1. And... You know, people are going to very much overlook a seven. They like one, twos and threes. So we need to take advantage when um, punters pile into horses just because they've got fancy form figures next to their name and haven't really analysed the race in depth. 
Moving on to the Saturday, there was four from Saturday that I liked. And the first one is this winner here. Maui Wowie, I'm gonna go for, I think that's how you say it. Maui Wowie has beaten Silman Yir, who has two really good R figures. And I actually posted, I think top rate would be tough to beat here. R1 and R2 figures are very good standard and the newcomers will need to be above average to win here. And I posted that uh, Friday evening. And even during the race, I thought, yes, yeah, Silman, Silman Yir has got Maui Wowie. Maui Wowie, when asked for an effort, or when asked to close, she picked up so strongly and then went past Silman Yir so comfortably that of all of the eye catchers, I think Maui Wowie could be the best horse that I highlight. I really do. I think Maui Wowie would end up in group races at the end of the season. I thought it was that impressive from Maui Wowie. Silman Yir probably did nothing wrong and got beat by a very good horse. Um, so, yeah, I'm very keen to add Maui Wowie to, to our, our Nagmi with the future in mind and much better races in mind. Um, I, was, I was very impressed with that performance. I want to talk a little bit about the Coral Challenge and I don't know whether I want to put a horse in my Nagmi or whether I want to put all of them in my Nagmi, but I think the race will work out well. Sinjari had made our eye catchers from Royal Ascot after finishing fifth in the Royal Hunt Cup when I thought Kieran left it too late. I think he almost tried to do it again today. Today? Yesterday. He almost tried to do it again yesterday. And post-race he explained to whoever it was, Ed Chamberlain maybe, um, that the trainer had said, you know, don't get there too early, don't, we're worried he might stop in front. And you could see that Kieran was really reluctant to make a move, even when he had all the others off the bridle, and he was on the bridle. And it almost allowed Check and Challenge to get rolling in time and Uzo to get the run down the, down the inside. Now, Check and Challenge um, got late money and went off the favourite. And I can understand why. And I think he's run, a, he's, you know, he's run a really good race. He's been beaten by what I believe was the best horse in the race, but possibly not the best ridden horse, even though it won. But then I wouldn't know who was the best horse, ridden horse in that race because... Check and challenge, probably check and challenge. He just didn't go quick enough early. You know, he was too slow. Uzo didn't get the clearest of runs. But so going back to it, Sinjari won the race, probably the best horse in the race. Check and challenge once further, and Uzo was very unlucky. The fact that check and challenge is now like an eye catcher and will win over further. Sinjari, I wouldn't be putting people off Sinjari again in the Golden Mile at um, Goodwood. You know, if he goes up three, four pound for that, the golden mile at Goodwood is still well within his compass. Uzo didn't get a clear run and still finished third here to two horses that are, are going to win again. Well, with that in mind, Uzo probably needs to go into your neck ring um, when he gets a clear run, particularly if they can find another race back at Sandown, gets a clear run, he's going to go close unless he bumps into more horses that are ahead of the handicap. There's not always a horse ahead of the handicap. Just because a horse wins a race doesn't mean it is. It could mean that all the others aren't. Or all the others are on their mark and it has one pound. Whereas I think these could have had four or five Sinjari and Check and Challenge. So Uzo is one that you, uh, I think you want to put in your Nagmi. And that race, keep that race in mind as a good form um, race. Two more. This isn't really a Nagmi. This is just a, a post-race script to it. Um, I think with a clear run, Free Wind wins it, she did anyway. Eshada finishes second, Cela Rosa finishes third. Free Wind and Eshada are probably Group 1 horses. Cela Rosa probably isn't, well I don't think she is, I think she's maybe Group 2, maybe Group 3. Um, so they're the kind of levels that I'd be looking at. If Eshada, if Cela Rosa dropped into a Group 3, I'd be keen on her. If Eshada dropped into a Group 3 next time, I'd be very keen on her. I think, you know, she's bumped into a very good group one horse in free wind and would have beaten Cida Rosa with a clear run. You know, the the, the, the um, bumping between Eshada and free wind and then Cida Rosa coming across Eshada late on has cost Eshada second for sure. You know, and I was on Cida Rosa. I thought Cida Rosa would win it. Um, you can actually see she went 1.3 in the run. When she skipped clear once the two bumped, I was like, yeah, we might have stolen this. And that would have been a lucky win for us for sure. 
Um, because she was only the third best horse in the race. And the final horse, definitely for your nag me this one, is Spirit of Nguru. Um, had recently been gelded, but hadn't run for 199 days. I thought he travelled really well, um, travelled like the winner, but then was out-battled late on by a horse with fitness under his belt. Fitness, recent run, um, in form, but I think next time, if, when they reoppose, Spirit of Nguru would reverse that form, and I think will be the, the best of these, and can certainly win off, it, off the same mark. If it goes up a pound, maybe two, with the fitness now under its belt, I think Spirit of Nguru can still win a similar handicap. So there's some thoughts. Um, as I said, I'm going to be trying to put the post-race post eye catchers underneath uh, each race when I see one, um, and then I will try and do a video, probably two videos a week, um, so that we don't have them too long, because this one's just gone over 20 minutes, just for like four days worth.